Hello, everyone. It's Joe at Lucas. Hey, I want to welcome back Allison Park, the founder of Bren. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about Bren 10. And I want to tell you a quick story. I got in introduced to Bren 10 almost a year ago. And uh, I have it at home and I drink it on a regular basis. So it's something that I think is just... When I found it, it was just like a, wow, it's just the weirdest bottle because it's so delicious. It doesn't taste like anything in the market and it's soft. So my wife drinks it. My buddies drink it that don't drink scotch. You know, it's just, it's just really interesting because there's nothing in my liquor store that tastes like Bren 10. Okay. I think the biggest problem with Bren 10 is you won't produce enough of it, but that's fine. Okay. I won't get into that. Let's keep it positive. Um, so let's let's focus in on Bren 10. Let's talk about it. How do you produce Bren 10? Because yeah. this is just flipping delicious. Okay. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So all, all my whiskeys, Bren across the line, they're all made 100% in the Cognac region of France. Okay. They're made 100% certified organic and using all local ingredients. So we're not bringing peat down from Scotland. We're not bringing Kentucky bourbon barrels over from the U.S. Just every single thing from beginning to end is local to the Cognac region of France. Okay. So with Bren 10, just like a steak cask, we grow all of our barley ourselves on site, heirloom varietal. We ferment there, we use local water, we have a local strain of yeast for the fermentation, and then we distill in a Cognac still. And then where these two kind of get separated is in the barrel program. So this definitely ages a minimum of 10 years. And like you said, very tiny, tiny quantities. We only do 300 cases a year. Um, and you can tell which year is what you're looking at because it says on the front in silver, it's a little hard to read, what right. year it was bottled. Okay. So that's 07 vintage if you just subtract 10. And where we've talked about a steak cast, this is aged in new French oak and wet exo cognac barrels. Our Bren 10s are only four barrels that I marry each year, so very, very tiny. There is always at least one new French oak in that barrel mix, but I don't necessarily disclose the other three, but I could possibly allude to the fact that they are cognac. Some might be wet, some might be dry, some might be young exo cognac barrels, some might be really old exo cognac barrels. And what I mean by that is, you know, we've all seen cognac on the shelf, and sometimes you can see something that's a 40-year-old cognac, or you can see a six-year-old cognac. Sure. So if I get those barrels after, if there was a cognac that sat in that barrel for 40 years, it's going to do something very differently to the whiskey, versus if a cognac sat in that barrel for six years, it's going to do something very differently. But I can't tell you what I've done. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, okay, so let's talk... So how did you decide, how, you know, when you're, when you're making a 10 year whiskey, a French single malt, how did you know 10 years prior that that was going to come out the way it came out? I didn't. Okay. I, never knew. I don't know today what's going to be great about our 20 year old. I've, if, if, if it even works. <laughs> oh, you have a 20 year old coming? I don't know. Oh, you already slipped there. <laughs> Is it right? I'll start. You have to wait 20 years to make a 20 year old. You know? I'm going to start, I'm going to start bugging the rep. How long? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we well, let's. We still have a lot of years, but the thing is, you know, when, when I started, we had our whiskey in 2012, our whiskeys were up to eight years old. Okay. And, um, and I had bottled some of those and then, and then I, I kept seven barrels and in 2015 they were 10 years old. So, you know, you can start to do the math. If I've saved a couple of barrels each year, kind of where, where we are in that cycle. Um, and I'll be honest, sometimes we have real duds and I'll just sell them to French pastry chefs in Paris. <laughs> but sometimes we've got some cool winners in there. But, but these to me are really special. I'm very proud that we've been able to bottle them and share them and not just keep them in our cellar in France. Um, they're, like you said, they're really delicate. They're really different. Um, they're ex extremely approachable and even at 48% ABV, whereas this is 40, this is still, I think, very friendly, right? 
Yeah, let's talk about that. Do you have a glass? Yeah, you bet I okay. do. <laughs> think about that. I think you made a great point at 48% ABV. I think you did. So you're talking about a 96 proof, yeah. okay, which is significantly higher than most single malts and scotches on the shelf. Yet, for me, and we probably should taste it first, and then I'll try and talk about what I get out of this, okay? So on the nose, I get a really slight hint of some wood, okay? Very slight, not, everything is soft that comes out of this. And I get the light notes, very similar to the regular bread, but they're so subtle. You really gotta take some time to find them because they're so soft, they're, they're delicate now, where they were more boisterous in the bread. Okay, totally. so they're super delicate, but I got a feeling I'm along that same note line. What else would you say is on the nose? Yeah, um, I think there's also a stone fruit element to the bread tens and a raisin element, which is very cool. Like if you think about a cooked raisin or rum raisin or something like that, not necessarily like a out of the box sun kiss yep. raisin, but something that you've cooked a little bit. And I always usually get like a very fresh apricot. It's not peach, it's, it's more of an apricot. And black tea, I typically find some tea in these. <clears throat> but I will say to your, to your wood note, um, and, and so you, I, think, I think I had checked before we started filming, um, I think you've got the 2017 vintage that you're drinking. Or the bottle of 2017, so 07. Yes. Okay, good. So something fun for people to see, this is intentionally different from year to year. I don't know if you can see those colors. Oh, yes. But the light yes. one, this is our 2016. The darker one is our 2017. And that is by design. My hope is that they never taste the same from year to year, right? I want to show the depth of the barrels. I want to show the beauty of what we're doing there. And the 2017 to me smells like the cellar. Like if you and I, Joe, went to France together and I got to take you past the still, past the fermentation tents, and I yes. walked in and it's like this funky, amazing earth floor with all that perfect kind of fungus on the walls, which is how in World War II, all of the soldiers knew where the cognac was because they looked for the black fungus growing on the outsides of these stone walls. So, and it's there, like it's cool. And all the, these like cognac barrels and these whiskey barrels are aging together. It smelled like this vintage. It's so cool to me. <laughs> that is, now I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing it. <laughs> it's like the, the wood and a little bit of that earthiness and the angels share. And it's like, that's what this whiskey is to me. I, I'm obsessed with this vintage. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's drink it. I've tried to drink twice. You keep on stopping <laughs> me. It's a good day. Mm. Viva la revolution. <laughs> That still is coming up, right? They're, they're, uh, they're July 4th. Well, I'll tell you what. So what I get out of this, and this is important for, for my Lucas family, this is an amazing alcohol. It's, it's so light. The first thing that comes to my mind, not the flavor, but the lightness, is cotton candy because it's so soft. But the palate is so incredibly long. So all these flavors are hanging on in the most delicate fashion right across your palate as it goes down. Mm -hmm. And I think that sets it aside. That's the single most thing that, that's why I drink this, is that it's like, you know, it's not a heavy drink. You could drink it while you're sitting out by, if you're sitting out in the sun, you could actually have this type of whiskey. I've never tasted anything like this. Um, I have eight bottles. <laughs> Left or personally? I have eight bottles left. I only have two at home. Ah. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I have the vintage. <laughs> so, but um, this is super delicious. Okay, and I want my, I definitely want everybody to know that from a consumer standpoint, everybody could drink this, period. This is 10 year. This is absolutely out of this world. Um, 
We may have a few left in a warehouse somewhere in the States. So if you need more, I may know a person who can help you. I like that. I like that. You may promise. Thank you. <laughs> I might know someone. <laughs> so what do you get out of the flavor in this? Yeah. What was... It's funny. I haven't had this one in, in quite a while. I've actually... We have a... Um, in Bond, we've got our, our, our next vintage that we haven't yet released. And I've been really familiarizing myself with that one. But I love coming back to this. Like I said, it's, it's really, it's one of my favorites. Um, I'm reminded and surprised again in when I exhale after I've swallowed it, I get, in addition to everything we've talked about, I get this like tobacco exhale, which I think I was calling those, the T notes in the nose. Um, which is really cool. And I haven't, ex I haven't really experienced that before. Maybe it's just mixed with my, <laughs> my mouthwash or something. <laughs> That's the thing, right? It's really fun for, your, for everyone to know. Like the flavor of what you're tasting is gonna depend on what you had in your mouth right before. <laughs> and I, that's such a great, great thing to say to everybody that's watching this. Like for this, if you drank anything before it, I would not recommend this bottle. This is delicate. This should be your first drink. It's a delicious bottle. It should definitely be the first drink so you could actually enjoy it. You know, it's not a slamming type of alcohol. It's an alcohol to sit down, pour yourself two, three, four, five fingers, depending on what makes you happy. And uh, it's really to enjoy this alcohol because this is really beautiful and delicate with a giant palate. I joke that the estate cask is my pool side whiskey and the 10 is my fireside whiskey. Ah. I want a slow sip. I want to experience. I want to really live into that whiskey and just be present. This is party. Everyone's invited. Make cocktails. Have fun. I don't think too hard about it. But this, I'm like, hmm, I'd like to be serious and contemplate whiskey. <laughs> you don't have to be. I'm just saying. Well, that's super delish. That was a, uh, I so enjoy that. I, will, I tell you what, I truly enjoy you taking time with us to visit, spend some time with my customers. You know, we, we, our customers are our family here. So you joined us today and spent some time visiting with our family. So we truly appreciate your time, Allison. I mean that. Um, you, you mean and I, I, I probably would be tracking you down for a little bit more Brent 10, but we'll work on that later. Yeah, really? Yeah, but let's work we'll, on that. Yeah. So, um, you know what, I know you guys don't, isn't there something coming up here like July 5th? I know, don't you guys have a, aren't you blasting off a program or something? Will you, will you, will you do, before we cut out of here, will you just tell me about that real quick? Yeah, so um, thank you. Um, July 14th, 10 days after American Independence Day is that steel day in France, which is France's Independence Day, basically. And so we are doing a little promotion with Bren and um, Highballs. Right, so I actually love it because it's a really cool summer cocktail. So Bren, and you would just take a tall glass, put some Bren in the bottom, and then top it off with your favorite sparkling water. So Perrier, Q, Fever Tree, Soda Stream, whatever you got. It's really, really fun to experience a single malt that way. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of how we're how we're celebrating. <laughs> Excellent. So your the big program kicks off on the fourteenth. Um, yes, the fifth to the fourteenth. 5th through the 14th, so it kicks off on the 5th. Yeah, I, I feel like a highball is my way of turning whiskey into champagne. It's like adding bubbles and lightness and like... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, hey, you know what? Thank you very much. I mean, I truly appreciate the time you took today. Um, you have an amazing day. Thanks. And for my customers, always, thanks for shopping at Lucas, one bottle at a time. We truly appreciate your business. Hope to see you soon. Same, thank you. Thank you, Lucas, friends. <laughs> you good?